Hundreds of volunteers are clearing rubble from the powerful explosion that shook Beirut on Tuesday. Many of them say they're here to help because they don't trust the government to get the job done. We're here, taking the place of the state, which is supposed to be taking care, cleaning and securing food and water for the people affected. We don't have a state to take these steps, so you have to take measures into your own hands. The government has declared a two-week state of emergency in Beirut. It's ordered several of the city's port officials into house arrest, and an investigation has been launched to find out why highly explosive materials were stored at the port for six years. But many Lebanese pin the blame on those at the top. Mistrust in the government has been rising in recent times. A 2019 Transparency International report said 41% of public service users paid bribes, the highest proportion among Middle Eastern and North African countries. 68% of the respondents said corruption had increased over the past 12 months. And Lebanon is among the worst performers on the watchdog's corruption perception index. But the current government has so far failed to address Lebanon's financial crisis or fix its crumbling energy infrastructure. Bailout talks with the International Monetary Fund stalled as the government is unwilling to scale down its spending. And unless domestic and international pressure can drive lawmakers to get the country's fiscal house in order, the troubles of the Lebanese people are far from over. Mubin Nasser, TRT World. Well, for more on this, Torek Farhadi joins us now from Geneva. He's a former economic advisor at the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank and at the United Nations. Welcome to Money Talks, Torek. Now, Lebanon's economy minister, Raoul Nehme, says Lebanon does not have the financial capability to face the repercussions of the terrible tragedy that unfolded on Tuesday. He even says that it needs now to coordinate with the IMF on a bailout. Do you agree? Oscar, thank you very much. Well, all finance ministers say these things. Uh, in fact, Lebanon uh, needed money from the IMF before this tragic uh, event. But let's unpack this a little bit. This has exposed gross mismanagement in the government, potentially corruption. So why would the IMF give Lebanon another uh, $10 billion or uh, uh, without asking any questions. I think the IMF will ask a lot of questions. The board of the IMF is composed of all the countries who are interested in helping <laughs> Lebanon, but they would want reform first, reform in uh, uh, the public sector, reform in uh, procurement, public procurement, um, uh, improving the, uh, in the index of uh, corruption. So what happens here is there is a port, which was very important because 80% of the food is imported through this port. And now there is an emergency situation. But to build the port again, it's, it's an infrastructure loan that uh, uh, other banks, uh, such as the EBRD, could, could advance here for 30 years or 45 years term. Uh, then there is... Uh, uh, the the housing, uh, about 300 the housing units have been damaged uh, at this. And uh, there also it's a, it's a mortgage uh, banking issue rather than IMF uh, giving money to the government because the money given to the government doesn't trickle down to the population. Then there is the small businesses. The small businesses, there has to be now schemes by anyone who wants to help Lebanon to uh, direct the money to the small business which have been damaged or their income potential has been damaged uh, rather than giving it through the government. Yeah. Uh, this is what the situation is. The other interesting okay, fact uh, about uh, Sorry, Torek, I, uh, we're running out of time. So if you, if you don't mind, could I jump in quickly? Because as a former economic advisor to the IMF, can you explain to us exactly what reforms are needed in Lebanon in order to appease uh, organizations like the IMF and potentially unlock billions of dollars in aid? Well, uh, uh, first of all, banking reform is, is needed. Uh, the banking uh, sector has a lot of debt. Uh, um, government reform is needed. Uh, the way the money is spent, more transparency is, is, is needed uh, uh, in terms of public, public markets and public procurement. 
because at the end of the day, uh, the IMF also is responsible in front of its board. The, the board is composed of other countries who are agreeing to give this money potentially to Lebanon. They would give a certain amount of money to Lebanon, but they would want these reforms first. But Lebanon itself is a very interesting country because close to 7 million people live in Lebanon, but close to 5 million Lebanese live outside Lebanon in South America, Africa. And these, this diaspora is going to also reinvest and help uh, on an individual basis. And that's how Lebanon has survived uh, in the last uh, 20 years, because it has always been indebted in a political crisis. Okay, Torek Farhadi, we'll have to leave it there. But thank you again for shedding us uh, some light on this issue. Thank you.